Welcome and thank you for joining the webinar today. My name is Amanda Jadro. I'm a Lead Portfolio Analyst with Tricom Funding. As a financial solutions provider to the staffing and consulting industry, it is our philosophy to be an active member in the staffing industry by staying abreast of the ever-changing marketplace. For that reason, Tricom was pleased to launch the Industry Insider webinar series designed to share our expert knowledge and resources with our fellow staffing industry colleagues. One of our core values is to build relationships and become a leading resource to staffing and consulting firms nationwide. Our presenters today are Dallas Wilfong and Alex Bartels. Dallas is the Director of Sales, Eastern U.S. Rapid Pay Card, and while growing up in, the Navy, in a Navy family, has lived all over the country and now resides in Clearwater Beach, Florida. Prior to joining the pay card industry in May of 2012, most of Dallas's experience dealing with unbanked and underbanked segment of the population came from his long career in the staffing industry. There he held such roles as general manager, division manager, national business development manager. In these roles, Dallas experienced firsthand the challenges faced with the pay, payroll and check distribution of thousands of unbanked employees working in local markets as well as per diem employees who travel to remote job sites both in and outside the United States. Dallas is a graduate of West Virginia University with a degree in business communication. Alex is currently manager of prepaid enrollment at Rapid Pay Card. He manages the team responsible for all new clients onboarding as well as ongoing support. Alex was senior team lead prepaid enrollment from 2013 to 2014, and enrollment specialist from 2009 to 2013. Alex brings more than five years enrollment and client support experience to Rapid Pay Card team. Alex is a, a graduate from the University of Tampa. Rapid Pay Card has been focused on employer pay payroll card programs since inception. Rapid Pay Card's mission is to help its clients achieve a legally compliant 100% electronic payroll that benefits the company financially, improves the lives of its employees, and creates a more sustainable environment model for payroll delivery. Pay Cards can provide a solution to millions of people in the United States households without a bank account. They are a free and convenient way to access payroll wages with the added value and functionality of a traditional debit or credit card. Additionally, an electronic payroll delivery system is the most efficient and cost-effective method of delivering payroll wages to employees. In today's Industry Insider webinar, Dallas and Alex will explain what are unbanked and underbanked employees, what are pay cards, and how the organization can benefit. By the end of the session, you'll see how pay cards can be mutually beneficial for both employees and employers. If you have any questions during today's presentation, please utilize the chat feature or the Q&A feature located on the right-hand toolbar. And with that, I will turn the floor over to Dallas and Alex. All right. Well, thank you very much, Amanda. Appreciate the, uh, the introductions, and thank you for allowing us to speak with the group today on pay cards and payroll best practices. And most importantly, I want to thank those of you who are joining us today. Um, thank you for choosing to spend your time with us. We know it's valuable, and we'll do everything we can to make this beneficial and educational for you. So the, the presentation that you're going to see today is something that we um, put together along with some others to present uh, across the country with the American Payroll Association, who are very, we are a very strong partner with. And it's something that we do for free, and it allows um, individuals to earn RCH credits towards new certification and recertification that they have uh, to do each year. And the reason I bring this up is I just want to extend the offer that if any of you are part of an American Payroll Association chapter and would like for us to do this presentation or another in person, we're certainly more than willing to do that um, for you. So if that is the case, please feel free to reach out to myself or Alex afterwards and uh, we'll coordinate that with you further. So we had a, had a look at our agenda here, and or Amanda discussed our agenda. 
And we have a pretty full one, so I'm going to do my best to get through this um, as, as quickly and completely as possible so that we have some time at the end for questions. And before we get started, I wanted to just take a second to talk about paper checks. We, we all know that they can be very challenging, and if any of you have um, had the extreme pleasure of writing paper, having to cut paper checks for your organization in the past or are still enjoying that great pleasure, um, you know that not only can it be a lot of fun and keep uh, ensure that you keep a, a hefty supply of aspirin in your drawer, but it also can be very time consuming and very costly to the organization. To talk more about the, the challenges with paychecks and the costs associated, I wanted to dig a little bit more into my experience in your industry when I worked in the staffing industry. Um, I had pl 10 plus years in staffing and my time was spent working for construct, construction staffing companies. And the last one that I worked for, we had approximately 10,000 plus employees that were working for us all over the country. We had 4,500 or so of those employees that were still receiving a paper check every day. And again, the cost of cutting the checks and managing that process was expensive. But what we found to be the most expensive part of um, dealing with the unbanked segment of the population and cutting paper checks was the check distribution process. And what I'm going to talk about, I'm sure, has had an effect on all of you, and you'll, you'll be able to relate to it to an extent. It may not be as great as what I'm about to discuss, but uh, and even if you're, if you're sending out one check and cutting one paper check, you know that it's still costly and time consuming. So to expand upon all of that, we had two types of employees. At least we classified them in two different ways. The first group of employees was what we called travelers. And travelers work for us on construction job sites all across the country in remote areas away from branch offices where we could distribute checks to them and also across the, uh, well, working internationally as well. So being that these employees were not near a local office, we really only had one choice when it came to ensuring that we got their checks to them on time which we all know in the staffing industry is the most important thing that an employee gets their payroll both on time and correctly, um, but also safely and securely. And that was FedExing their checks to them individually. To put that in perspective, we had on average 400 employees working as travelers for us every week across the country and internationally. So 400 FedEx envelopes going out at about $20 a pop cost us over $400,000 annually just for that group. Now, you're probably thinking that you really can't top that, and, uh, you know, I can't top that, and that's got to be the most expensive way to, uh, you know, get checks out. But we actually found that our local employees, when we looked at both the hard costs and the soft costs, were actually costing us more. And what I mean by that is we had 100 offices plus across the country, and because like many of you, we were constantly track, tracking down time cards that we needed signatures from our clients on so we could verify hours before paying those employees. We ran two payroll cycles every week. The first one was for those who were getting their time cards in and signed on time, and those checks would be sent out via FedEx on a Wednesday night. And then we had the check run that would go out on a Thursday evening to catch up those other employees where we had a little bit of a delay on time cards. So we were sending two FedEx runs every week to 100 offices, and that was costing us over $200,000 annually. Again, sounds like a big chunk of change, but what we found out was the biggest cost, while it wasn't a hard cost, was associated with how we distributed paychecks after they actually got to each of our branch offices. We found that we had really two choices. And the first option that we came up with was that we were going to do everybody a favor. We were going to have them, we were going to have somebody stay late every Friday night and hand checks out till 7.30 or 8. You never wanted to be that lucky person, but somebody had to do it. And we would ask our employees and stress to them to come in after hours. Obviously, that was not generally the case. We found employees were coming in if we were lucky at 3 or 4 o'clock, only leaving their job site an hour or two early. But many of them were coming in on their lunch break and a lot of them were coming in on the first break of the morning. Now, if the employees were simply taking their paychecks and then running to the bank and cashing them and going back to work, that would have been tolerable. 
Um, not not something that we wanted we would want to see because it was a loss of billable out, billable time, but it might be tolerable to some extent. But as you probably know already, that typically is not the case. What typically happens is your employees will come in, pick up a paycheck, and then run all over town after they cash it to pay their bills, whether it's their phone bill, the car note, or utilities. And they'll either do that by doing that in, by paying in cash in person, or they spend a bunch of time going to the post office, getting stamps, getting envelopes, then going to buy money orders, sticking them in the mail, and sending them out. Either way, it is a huge hit to your bottom line in, our in, in, in your industry uh, because you do have that loss of billable hours with the employees away from the, the client. So this was unacceptable. We were upsetting clients. We were losing hours. So we decided that we had the best idea. We were going to send our sales force out to job sites, and they were going to hand deliver these paychecks to each of their job sites and to all the employees that were working for them. Turned out it wasn't all that successful. We did find out that people were still leaving the job sites after we disrupted the job site and upset our clients. They were still leaving to go pay all their bills, like, we talked, like I talked about before. And in addition to that, we came to the brilliant conclusion that we were spending 20% of our sales effort because we were spending one day a week with our sales force acting as a courier service. So all of these things are a huge hit to your bottom line, take a lot of time away from the, from the organization and from those that are in productive roles. So what exactly is the size and the opportunity of the prepaid market? Well, as we can see here, in 2012, there were $986 billion loaded onto prepaid debit cards. It's a very large number, but it's actually continuing to grow, and we expect that it'll exceed $1,200 billion in 2018. It's interesting to look over to the right and see where th these numbers are being made up. As you might expect, the largest portion, and it will continue to be the largest portion of the, of the uh, segment, is being made up by those who do not have access to or have limited access to a bank account. They, they're making up uh, $649 billion in 2012 and expected to exceed $778 billion in load in 2018. But I think what's really interesting to point out are the three below there. The, the next closest group in size that are utilizing prepaid cards today and payroll cards are those who do have traditional bank accounts. And you're probably asking, well, if somebody has a traditional bank account, why in the world would they need or want to use a prepaid card and the payroll card? Well, we're going to talk about this a lot more in, in, in greater detail further in the presentation, but we're going to show you that, believe it or not, pay cards are oftentimes, most times, a lot cheaper than utilizing basic checking services. We also see a lot of college students and teens who are having funds loaded onto prepaid cards from parents who have a pay card account. Maybe they've opened it specifically for that reason. But the parent's then able to load funds to their child, child's card, and we typically call those a companion card in the industry. And that allows them to have access to funds without having to go to check cashers or the bank that the check is drawn off of in order to cash it, and allows them the safety and security of utilizing a debit card versus carrying cash around with them. So why doesn't every employee have a bank account? Well, there are a lot of reasons for this. Some of them are the following. We see that a lot of employees um, have had past credit or banking issues, and therefore they do not qualify or are unable to open a bank account. We also see that a lot of people, while they did a great job managing their funds <clears throat> and paying their bills on time, were affected by the housing crisis and may have experienced a foreclosure and at that point we're no longer able to um, enjoy the benefits of a bank account and, elect and digital banking. We also see several that just don't meet bank requirements these days. And believe it or not, there are a lot who just choose not to have a bank account. And that's due to the fact that the fees are so high and that in some cases, banking has become very inconvenient for them. And we'll discuss that more later in the presentation. So, there was a study done in 2009, it was the first of its kind, and it looked at the size of the unbanked population. Now you would think 
that with the economy slowly improving, with the housing crisis behind us and things starting to pick back up in both of those areas, that we would see more and more people uh, coming off the unbanked list and having access to a bank account again. But in fact, since 2009, and this survey is a year or two old, so it, the numbers have grown, I'm sure, since then, we see 821,000 more U.S. households have become unbanked since that first survey. 8.2% of U.S. households are unbanked, with approximately 17 million adults living in those households. Approximately 20% of those households are, are of U.S. households are unbanked, and this, this represents one in five households, or 24 million households with 51 million adults. 29%, almost 30% of households do not have a savings account, while 10% do not have a checking account. A great feature, and there are a lot of them today with pay cards, for the cardholder is that not only do they allow you to check off the box for the checking option and help you with you know, paying bills and um, making purchases and everything else that you would do with a traditional checking account and debit card, but they also, many of them will allow for a free savings account, and oftentimes that account is interest-bearing. And, and Dallas, I did want to jump in here uh, really quick um, and define underbanked for those on the phone. There was two two terms on this. One was unbanked, and the other was underbanked. Uh, underbanked it, uh, individuals are those who may have a traditional uh, banking relationship, but still utilize uh, either check uh, check cashing or or payday loan services. And, and you might be wondering why they would do that. And just you know, one of many examples I can give you. And thanks, Alex, for for that. Um, is that oftentimes you might see somebody that sets up an account um, and it's a local bank out of state, they, they've moved, or maybe they've just moved across town. And, you know, the traffic situation, you know, there's, there are very few locations for that credit union or bank. So, it, you know, it takes them, you know, 45 minutes to an hour to access that. Um, it's just more convenient at some point for them and cheaper with the cost of gas for them just to utilize a check cashing facility or, you know, to send, send a uh, uh, money order. But Alex, again, thank you very much. So many, have, many of you have uh, possibly heard of the lawsuit that um, a McDonald's franchisee operator was uh, faced with in Pennsylvania. The lawsuit that occurred um, that an employee filed against them was accusing the franchisee of not offering the employee the choice between direct deposit to their personal account or a pay card, but instead only to the pay card. Now, this is not, this is not compliant. This is not acceptable when it comes to uh, regulation. This would be basically the same thing as an employer saying that you must use a specific bank for your direct deposit. So if you had a treasury relationship with ABC Bank, you were telling every employee there that that was where they had to have their direct deposit. It is a um, fundamental aspect of the pay card industry and pay choice that you must, you must provide um, a choice of the banking institution to the employee. Additionally, the lawsuit accused the franchisee of giving them a pay card program they cost them fees every time they wanted to access their pay. Another fundamental key point to um, the pay card industry and the regulation is that employees must have at least one way each pay period of accessing all of their funds paid to the, pay, paid to the penny completely for free. Um, it did come out after the fact that this program did allow them to do this, but uh, that was one of the things that was alleged in the lawsuit. So the APA and National Consumer Law Center agree that payroll cards make sense for unbanked employees or unbanked employees if proper guidelines are followed, and they have published, um, you know, this letter to the APA members, um, which consists of what they consider to be good guidelines and best practices. And they state, like the um, previous two issues that we talked about concerning the lawsuit, that employees must be able to access their full wages in cash at least once each pay period without fees, and employees must have a choice of wage payment method and be able to change it as they choose. 
They also say that employers should offer a payroll card that is widely accepted and that employers must provide clear information and training on the use of the payroll card and possible fees. Really, this last point is something that really should come back to your pay card provider, and any quality pay card provider is going to provide you with the information that you need to accomplish this. They also state that employees must be provided free and convenient access to their account information, and that the funds in the payroll card account must have deposit insurance. In other words, be FDIC insured. Be wary of over, overdraft protection and be wary of employer incentives. Uh, the reason for these two points, and we actually did a survey at Rapid Pay Card of the American Payroll Association about two or three years ago. And one of the questions that we asked was, you know, what is the number one reason that your employees have come to you saying that they want off direct deposit because they're leaving their bank. And the number one reason by far was high fees. And when we drilled down further, the number one high fee was actually overdraft fees. So they are, their suggestion is, is a good one. Um, you want to, because there are some programs that do still allow for overdraft protection, but what ends up happening is that um, the employees typically occur two or three, possibly four at a time, and are paying fees anywhere from $15 to $45 for those overdrafts. And when you have a paycheck, an employee living paycheck to paycheck, uh, that can certainly eat up a lot of their pay, and chances are they're gonna come back to you and ask to be taken off that pay card. With the employer incentives, it's just a good practice to be wary of companies who are offering to pay you to utilize their program. So are prepaid cards a viable alternative to a bank account? They definitely are, and let's talk about that just a little bit more. You, so the question is, does free checking with direct deposit still exist? And many banks, and most banks, used to offer free checking to everybody. But now, unfortunately, there are quite a few requirements that you must meet if you're not part of a credit union in order to receive what is called free um, free checking. And some of those are things such as a $1,500 to a $5,000 minimum balance that you must keep on a regular basis. They'll ask you not to use a teller. They'll say no live customer service, no paper statements, and they have a lot of other requirements as well. So because of this, well, the, the early users of branded prepaid cards tended to be the underbanked. We see that more people are looking at pay cards due to the fact that they are a cheaper alternative for basic financial transactions and services. And we also see that a lot of banks are opening fewer branches in low to middle income areas and are actually closing many of those facilities. So the underbank face more obstacles to mainstream banking and with appropriate education, it allows prepaid cards to be a safe and cost effective and much, <clears throat> and much more cost effective tool for them to use. This also allows this population to conduct basic financial transactions for free. So this is a study that was done by Brenton Woods, and they are a think tank organization outside of our industry. And you can actually find several studies online if you, uh, you, know, if you search for it, that'll show you the same thing, all done by different, different companies outside of uh, the pay card industry, that take a look at the average annual cost of these four different areas, one being traditional banking, one being living in a cash environment, so using check cashers and money orders, one being a GPR card, which means a general purpose reloadable card that you oftentimes see hanging on a J-hook in, say, a Walgreens, a Walmart, or some other retail stores, and then the pay card. And as you can see from these statistics, that banking is actually, basic checking is actually one of the highest costs on an annual basis for, for uh, employees. Now you see an $83 average annual cost for pay cards. But the great thing about a pay card is that you can actually utilize a pay card completely for free if all you're trying to do is basic financial transactions, such as making purchases, accessing your funds, um, paying bills online, things of that nature. You're obviously going to incur some fees, which is what this typically is consisted of, when you, when you use a, a luxury or convenience option, such as going out of network on an ATM.
but many providers like us in the pay card industry utilize All Point Network, which is actually the largest um, ATM network in the country. As in fact, Bank of America, who has the largest traditional ATM network, is about half of the size. And then also many will also offer, offer on top of that money pass. So this slide is showing all of us the states throughout the U.S. that currently allow for the mandating of pay choice. And again, pay choice means you can mandate electronic payment as long as you are giving the employee choice. So you can't just mandate a pay card. You have to, in addition to the pay card, offer either the choice of direct deposit or a paper paycheck. And this map actually is a interactive map that we have and we put together with Kathy Beta and, um, and uh, many from, the, uh, from, from Visa and also the American Payroll Association. And this is something that we can certainly send out to any of you that would, uh, would like to have it. And what this will allow you to do is simply hover over the state that you're, you're interested in looking at regulation and compliance in and simply click on that state and it'll bring all the information that you need um, up for you immediately. You can also go into an advanced search and click on multiple states and you can drill down to certain things such as termination pay, um, you know, or, or whatever it might be to, uh, to, to focus in a little bit. When we look at this map, you'll see a lot of green states. Those are the states that I just showed you on the previous slide. So again, you can mandate there. The yellow states are states that you can mandate, but it's only after a certain period. So for example, for any new hires, on or after July 1st, 2009 in the state of Florida, you can mandate there. You can also mandate for any employees hired on or after July 1st, 2005 in the state of Iowa, and January 1st, 2010 in the state of Virginia. So let's take, uh, let's take a closer look at pay cards. And pay cards are simply prepaid debit cards. There's no bank account or credit check required. Um, that's what's great about them. Everybody can have one. They are not credit reporting. Um, so some might see the only drawback is that they don't um, build credit. At least they don't currently build credit. But if they did and they were reporting, um, you know, there would be an application process and most would be excluded from being able to have one. Wages are loaded by the employer or, or the federal government for benefits and they're simply prepaid stored value cards. Now, I don't know if everybody's aware of this, but as of uh, last year, the federal government has moved to paying all of um, its benefits to, uh, to individuals via a pay card if they do not have direct deposit. So for example, if you're doing your taxes this year and you have a refund coming to you and you do not have direct deposit information to require, you're no longer gonna get a paper paycheck. Instead, you're going to get uh, assigned a pay card and the funds will be loaded there, which is fine because, again, it's just a, a prepaid debit card. And, and the easiest way to think of a, of a, a pay card or a prepaid card is, is just a, a virtual bank account um, that is loaded simply by, by direct deposit. Exactly. So and there, there are two kinds of, uh, of cards in the marketplace. Um, the first is what we most commonly see and, uh, of course, what, what we have and most, again, most pay card companies have these days. Um, that is a branded card. So that's a card that carries the logo of Visa, MasterCard, American Express, or Discover. And what this does is obviously makes it easier to access funds because obviously companies like Visa and MasterCard and their cards are accepted just about everywhere. Um, it also uh, allows for signature and pin point of sale purchases. Um, there are pin requirements for ATM transactions for security purposes. They can offer lower or no fees at all. And of course that's gonna vary. And they may carry a credit option, um, but uh, as you heard from the APA and as you'll hear from us repeatedly, please exercise caution there. It's very dangerous for your employees. It can be very costly and it can certainly um, create some concern on whether or not your pay card program is gonna be successful. Now the other card is an unbranded card. And we used to see these a lot in the past. And I actually work for a company that used these for per diem purposes only. Um, but uh, these are cards that are typically just marked with an ATM network logo. 
And as you can imagine, they can only be used at an ATM and sometimes at a store that might allow uh, debit card purchases. These really are not as flexible and um, they really are not compliant because, again, you have to be able to access your pay as an employee to the penny and you have to be able to do that for free. <clears throat> Obviously, accessing funds from an ATM machine, you're very limited and you're probably not going to get down to the pennies and cents, just $20 increments. So this is important, not so much for on the front end because most have moved away from this, but you may still find this with some companies where they're using them for replacement cards as a temporary interim card when, when one is lost or stolen. And during that time period, you would, you would fall out of compliance. So you want to steer clear of those. <clears throat> so we talked about pay to the penny. And there is something called letter of the law. And, and that is exactly that. It is the ability for the employee or the cardholder to be able to access their pay to the penny free and clear. And while companies vary on what options they have, many of us show all of these that, that, that I have here on the screen in front of you. The first is probably the most common when somebody wants to access a large sum of cash. Sometimes that's their whole paycheck. Sometimes they just need a larger amount for a, for a bigger purchase. But that would be over-the-counter cash advances. And really what that is is just, it's just a teller-assisted um, withdrawal. The great thing about pay cards is Let's just use a MasterCard pay card as an example. The cardholder can go into any MasterCard bank across the country. That's typically 98 to 99 percent of all banks and credit unions. It's really hard to find one that isn't. And they can go into any of those banks, so not just a Bank of America, not just a Wells Fargo or a TD Bank or whatever it may be, like you and I, uh, but they can go into any of those, walk up to the counter like they're a customer, because they are, and they can take as little or as much of their pay off that card as they want to simply by swiping the card and entering their PIN. The next option might be ACHing to a personal account. And again, the question, why in the world would somebody be getting their direct deposit onto a pay card if they have a traditional bank account? Well, typically when I talk to groups, uh, you know, say at the APA, Many don't quite get what I'm about to say, but I am sure that at least half of you um, on this call, being in the staffing industry, are familiar with this, and that oftentimes you find that either A, the employee just doesn't trust the, the employer or anybody, or B, and the one that was most common to me from my employees, was that they didn't want their spouse or significant other to know exactly how much they were making. So they would, you could have the funds put on the pay card, and then you can transfer as much or as little as you want to your personal bank account. Um, another option is money orders. And this is great if you have employees that work in rural areas and don't have a lot of branch locations for banks or credit unions. This allows the employee to go into a U.S. post office, have a money order made out to them, then push that back across the counter for the full amount of their pay to the, post, the postmaster and the U.S. Post Office is obligated to turn around and cash that money order. You also have convenience checks. And convenience checks are probably, Alex, wouldn't you say, one of the, the, the least used, used tools that we see, at least in our business, correct? Correct, yes. So I think, it's prob I think our, our last look at this was probably, what, less than half of 1%? Yeah, it, even lower than that. Than that. Okay. So it's, it's really what, what we have here is a convenience check that can be written out to oneself or to another and can be cashed at you know, a place like Walmart completely for free through the partnership that we have with them for that particular product. Um, but uh, really the reason we, we still have this today is, as you heard, it's not really utilized, is for compliance purposes. So we see this uh, being a tool that a lot of companies look for, a lot of our clients look for, um, when it comes to termination pay in many states. Another one that isn't used too often is a request to check from customer service. Um, this is actually something that's great if you do have individuals that travel for you and are away from home working on projects or with clients. Uh, the reason it, it is a nice tool for them is that, you know, let's, let's imagine a, an employee is working three states away and they're on a project that lasts six weeks, but they still have a rent or a mortgage that they are responsible for, and let's say their landlord back home does not accept uh, 
you know, any kind of uh, digital payment, um, or if they're in town, they don't accept cash. The employee could simply call customer service and request a check be made out for the full amount of that rent and sent directly to that landlord so they don't miss a beat while they're, while they're out of town. So this is what is called spirit of the law. So the last one, letter of the law, allowed for full access to funds for free. This, is, this allows an employee to access their, their wages and, their, and the funds on a card but it doesn't necessarily allow them the ability to access all of them. Because what we're finding here is that, and, and one of the most used features these days, um, one way of accessing funds is a point of sale with PIN cash back. So if you think about it, these days, every time you go into a grocery store or a gas station, uh, one of the first things you're asked when you're checking out is, would you like any cash back? And if the teller's not asking you, the little box in front of you is. So we find that most people these days tend to leave cash on their cards and utilize, you know, swipe pur purchases for point of sale or, you know, use the card for paying bills, et cetera. And when they need cash, they just get $20, $40, $60, whatever it might be when they're, when they're out doing their shopping. The other way that the card is used and you can access wages and funds is through just your typical point of sale purchase with a signature. So you're buying a shirt or paying for some other kind of merchandise. And then, of course, we have ATM withdrawals. But we see that this is, this is quickly a declining method of accessing uh, wages with the others that have been mentioned. And we're going to show you a slide that speaks to that here shortly. So some value-added features may include, zero, and, and we think they should include, zero liability protection for lost and stolen cards, so FDIC-insured cards, and I believe most are these days, if not all. Um, government benefits can be direct deposited onto uh, an individual's card, online bill payment, free interest-bearing savings, cashback rewards, and merchant discounts. In addition to those, we have a custom card um, where you can design your own card. Um, I think, Alex, you have a picture of your dog on yours, correct? I do, yes. But I'm actually uh, in the middle process of updating mine, mine right now. So it's a cool feature. We love to see this in the industry because obviously it's a, it's a sign that somebody has accepted this as their, their primary um, banking source and they're going to continue to you know, carry a long relationship um, with us in, in the card program. Um, you also see uh, companion cards are very popular these days. I think I talked about those a little bit earlier on. Uh, these are a great tool when you have somebody that you want to uh, – um, send money to, but you don't want to send them cash or you don't want to give them the burden of having to go cash a check that you've written to them. So perfect for teenage um, children or uh, those in, in college or, or high school or just away. We also, uh, they also feel that responsive customer service is extremely important and we would agree with that. Um, I think that actually is one of the most important things when you're doing your due diligence um, to consider because you can have all the bells and whistles in the world and the best fee schedules and uh, it, can, it can be completely for free, but if somebody's getting horrible customer service when they have a question, uh, probably not going to be too thrilled with the program. So that is important to us and I think uh, is important to most. Text alerts are great um, and text alerts can be used for a variety of things. Um, they can, you don't need a smartphone for text alerts, but you can check your balance. You can look at, uh, you know, your, your last five um, transactions. You can get direct deposit information, um, a lot of different features simply by texting some keywords into, uh, and sending it to a, to a number that's provided. Also, mobile apps or mobile access is also a great feature these days and something that's very important, especially to younger generations. And, Dallas, on that, um when, when choosing a provider, um, it is, is choosing a provider that has a, a mobile strategy. As we all know, um, everything is going mobile. Everyone has a phone. Um, more than 50% of smartphones are actually uh, prepaid smartphones now. Um, so uh, choosing a provider that has a mobile strategy where, where all features are available uh, via mobile device is important. Yeah. And, and these days, if, 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 if any of you are familiar with the difference between a mobile app and a mobile-enabled website, um, it might not sound like a lot, but if you've ever used the latter, um, it, it makes a big difference. An app is, you know, built for your phone, built for your, 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 your tablet. It's easy to use. It's not clunky. Um, has all the same features and tools. 
when you go onto a mobile-enabled website, you find yourself having to expand that picture, and it's much slower. So, you know, it sounds, sounds like something small, but it certainly makes life a lot easier. So why would your employees accept the pay card? Well, I can give you lots of reasons, but, you know, I'll give you a few. Uh, one, it ensures, you know, they're, they're paid timely and oftentimes early. You know, uh, generally direct deposit shows up in your account um, with most companies. You know, you're, you're paying your employees on direct deposit. It's, it's there at midnight on Thursday night or whatever day payday is for you. Whereas your other employees that are getting a paper check are having to wait for it in the mail, wait for it to be delivered, or having to wait till they can conveniently come in and pick that paper check up from you. Um, it also uh, allows the employee to function in what has become an increasingly digital economy. Um, there, there are a lot of things, as I'm going to talk about here in just a second, you just can't do with cash anymore. So this, believe it or not, is, is very important. It also gives them a feeling of inclusion and empowerment by having a card. Most important, saves them a lot of time and a lot of money. We talked about what they have to go through in order to cash their checks and pay their bills, and you're going you're gonna to help them realize the benefit of not having to go through those actions anymore. And it's obviously a lot safer and much more secure than, uh, you know, storing cash in your mattress or carrying around a wad of it in your pocket that you simply can lose and never recover. And because they can do everything that they do with a check and more, and now it can be done completely for free. So if you think about right now, your employees are probably either cashing a, uh, cashing a check that, the, that is drawn on the bank account, and they're that's the best case scenario, and they're probably only paying five to ten dollars to do that, plus all the gas and time. Or worst case scenario, they're going to a check cashing facility and paying up to ten or twelve percent of their paycheck, and also spending the time and uh, and money to do so. So we see millions of Americans using prepaid cards. They are obviously doing it for choice and protection. Um, but they're also doing it, like I said, because today's economy simply requires electronic payment. So I want to run through two different scenarios to expand upon that and just kind of like get us all thinking about, you know, why, why you do need a card in order to uh, function in today's economy. If we look at where cash is accepted uh, or where it's actually required and needed, you might find some places that will only accept cash, you know, for tips. Uh, maybe it's a diner that uh, for either novelty purposes or they just aren't simply set up to receive plastic um, are still looking for cash or check only. Um, maybe a small farmer's market. Um, we uh, don't find that there's a whole lot more than that. And actually, many of those are still are, are starting to move to uh, devices that allow them to take electronic payment. I see all the time at the farmer's markets around here that people are using what's called a little square device. So instead of having to pay cash, you can actually swipe the card. Where digital payment is needed is a different story, and there's actually a lot more areas where it is. If you think about it, you can't book a hotel room, a rental car, pay bills online, make purchases online, an airline ticket, or anything of that nature with cash. So this really is a benefit that allows them to move into more of a digital economy and saves them, again, a lot of time and a lot of money. So those who would not otherwise have a way to participate in direct deposit are oftentimes employees who are seeking a non-credit payment tool that helps users control their budget and offer many of the same fraud and loss protections. And funds are loaded by employers for payroll, rewards and incentives, and oftentimes again by the government for benefits. Employees of parents and college-age students who want a safe and secure way to give money to their kids, as we've talked about many times, are also finding this is a very valuable tool for them and a true benefit. So who exactly is using P is using pay cards? Um, again, it's not just the unbanked. Uh, there's a study that was uh, done here by the eight group that shows that 43% of those using pay cards are now Gen, gen Yers. And the reason for this, we feel, and what what the uh, what the industry has found is that typically this is because they like one the tech tools and the options that are available with pay cards. Believe it or not, the pay card industry is generally ahead in this game um, beyond the, uh, the banks. They also do a lot of research online. They're no longer going to their parents or their, even their friends now for advice. They're going to Google. 
and they have no problem researching and laying studies out next to each other, and they're finding out that, again, pay cards are a much cheaper alternative for them. A third earn more than $45,000. 34% have a college degree or higher, and there's a very, very high consumer satisfaction rating. In fact, if you put these numbers against just about any other industry, I think you'll, you'll see that these are very impressive. So when the, um, the eight group did a survey of cardholders and asked them how they would rate using a prepaid debit card, only 6% said it's not particularly helpful. 22% said somewhat, and I would say that they probably just are, are new to using the card and haven't realized its full benefit. And 44% said very, 29% said extremely. So they also asked, for what do you use your prepaid debit card for most frequently? And I think we'll see, we'll see it. this was done in 2011. It takes a couple years for the information to trickle down to the rest of us in the industry. But I think that we're gonna see a lot of shifting here. I think you'll see the, for online shopping, really shoot up and as well as to, to pay bills. But we also see that they're currently using um, the card for purchases at stores and restaurants instead of cash. And as I mentioned before, ATMs are, are quickly declining and really not, uh, not a preferred method or an often used, oftentimes used method for accessing cash. This is, I think, a, a very cool slide. It shows how Americans are paying their bills. And it wasn't too long ago that probably the, the number one way to pay your bills on, was to uh, stick a check in the mail. But as you can see, it's, it's currently making, per, or, I'm sorry, paying your bills online. And again, I think that we will continue to see this grow over the years. And I think we'll see that uh, people are sending less and less through the mail. And in 10 years, that, that, that mail will probably drop towards the bottom. The National Urban League did a survey and asked what prepaid users like most about their pay cards. And as you can see, like we talked about before, the number one thing was that they cannot overdraft or overspend. And then following that, you see a lot of other reasons that are also very important and beneficial to the cardholder. So instant fund loading for employers is a great tool. Alex, do you wanna just talk, talk about that real quick? Yes, so uh, so the ability for, for a card to receive funds not only from direct deposit, but from a uh, from an immediate uh, account that uh, that a, a employer would load funds to and have preloaded um, is 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 very important. Uh, the ability for those those funds to be available instantly on the card uh, for the cardholder not to have to be sitting there; they could be out on a job site and have those funds loaded onto the card. Um, and these are perfect for any type of these payments here. Uh, termination pay, inclement weather, so uh, any type of disaster recovery plan, um, corrections, and, and additions to, to pay. Um, as Dallas said, you know, in the staffing injury industry, sometimes those time cards don't come in uh, in a timely manner. Uh, the ability for a card to be instant fund loaded um, is, is a great tool. Excellent. Thanks, Alex. So for, for prepaid, prepaid cards for the consumer, work just like a traditional debit and credit card. They have all the same features and benefits, oftentimes a lot more um, came, come with the same uh, fraud and uh, loss protection that you and I enjoy with our traditional debit cards. And a consumer can obviously take that card to make purchases at a retailer. But of course, now they can also use that card online. So no more standing in the long lines during the holidays, no more parking at the end of the parking lot and fighting the rain or the snow, depending on where you live. Um, you know, life gets a lot simpler and again, Everything we're talking about here is a, uh, is a, is a real feature and benefit that you can um, give to your employees and you can do it completely for free. So they can, as, as I talked about, pay bills, book airline tickets, car rentals, hotel reservations. They can even buy snacks and drinks on planes because if you've been on a flight recently, you've probably realized that unless you're on a small puddle, puddle jumper, uh, there really aren't too many flights that will allow you to pay for anything in cash. And I've experienced firsthand with people sitting next to me, their inability to get a, a beverage or, a, or some kind of food because that's all they had on them. I've even purchased uh, meals for people and allowed them to pay me back with the cash that they had. Um, most cards do allow consumers to take out uh, cash at the ATMs. They offer, again, the same fraud and loss protections as any debit card. They help cardholders and consumers control their budget 
avoid interest charges, and again, should allow them to avoid debt and overdraft fees. So who's still receiving a paper check? Um, you know, we talked about those numbers, but I, what, what I think is interesting here is to see it kind of broken out into two major segments. Not surprised at all to see the underbank check recipients, but again, um, you might be surprised to see that 40% of prepaid users are those who do have traditional bank accounts. And I think that shows uh, just how valuable they are to consumers and how beneficial and cost effective um, they're, they're viewed in the marketplace. So with that, I want to turn the presentation over to Alex and he is gonna to talk to you about uh, the potential green savings that you can realize if you or your organization has a green or corporate sustainability initiative in place or it's something that you are looking to move forward in the, to in the future. Thanks, Dallas. And, and these next few slides here are some, some pretty impressive stats for, for the green savings if there is an environmental uh, and green initiative happening at your company or uh, this is a, a great uh, feature to sell, you know, for, for your clients if, if any of your clients have a, have a green initiative. Um, just really, really quickly here, uh, by switching to direct deposit, an individual employee paid every two weeks um, can avoid the release of one pound of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. This amount of greenhouse gases is, is equivalent to four miles not driven in your car or uh, one half square foot of forest for, uh, preserved. Also, I, by, by paying by direct deposit, you can actually say it's a pound of paper per year per employee, which is, is pretty significant. And then uh, finally, avoid the release of, of four gallons of wastewater into the environment. And, and this is just by switching uh, one employee paid every two weeks. Um, you know, if, if you're paying paying weekly, and of course you guys have, have hundreds of, uh, if not thousands of employees, uh, the environmental savings are, are, are huge. Yeah, and if, if at any point you would like us to do a uh, free green um, savings calculation for you, please feel free to reach out to Alex or myself, and we'd be happy to provide a more detailed cost analysis or cost savings for you guys. And then in addition to uh, uh, to, to, to not cutting paper checks, um, moving also to online uh, pay stubs is, is even more savings. So. I think at this point we're going to um, – Move over, move on to to questions now. And Amanda, I'm going to let you go ahead and and. Okay. Well, I do have a couple questions that came in um, during the presentation. If anyone else has questions, please feel free to enter them in the chat feature, the Q and A feature. Now, I will also open up a poll so that you can give us your feedback. The first question is: How does your company make money when everything is free? <laughs> All right. So we we love that question. Um, so as you as you heard, and I want to stress, um, our program, as uh, most programs, um, do allow you to offer pay cards to your employees completely for free. Uh, these days, you shouldn't have to with the pay card program worry about paying for any kind of marketing materials, any kind of training, customer service for both you and your employees should always be free and 24/7, 365. Um, again. Just to stress, everything should be free. There should be no cost to you, the employer, whatsoever. And I've also, I think, hopefully demonstrated how your employees can use the card completely for free for basic uh, financial transactions and services. So where we make our money um, is really, for, for us, it's a little bit unique in the industry. We really focus on uh, making money off of a long-term relationship with both our clients and, and the card holders, who are also our clients. Um, but providing good customer service and them continuing to use the card, which over time, as we build volume, we get uh, what's called interchange fees. So what that is, if you're not familiar with it, is when I walk in, or you do, to make a purchase with a merchant, the merchant, not the employee or the company, is paying Visa or MasterCard pennies on the dollar. We're then collecting pennies on the pennies from Visa and MasterCard. So really for us, it's all about volume, and you only have volume if you're providing you know, excellent customer service and you're continuing that relationship with cardholders. So ho hopefully that, ex that explains that. Absolutely does. Okay, so what happens if an employee loses their card? Alex, you wanna take that one? 
Yes, thank you, Dallas. So, um, so when someone loses their card, our program offers uh, what's known as card linking um, at, through instant issue cards. So every one of, uh, of, of your branch locations would be able to have what's known as an instant issue card. That's cards with, with either the Visa or MasterCard logo on them that you'd be able to go ahead and hand to your in, employee uh, immediately who lost their card. Um, and through our card linking technology, um, that cardholder is able to go ahead and, and call customer service and link that card to their original account immediately. So very important that the money gets transferred immediately onto the new card, but also more important for everyone is that new uh, card gets linked to the original account information. Um, that way the, the direct deposit account information does not need to get updated every time someone loses the card. Okay, so the money gets transferred. Any money that's on that lost card gets transferred over to the new card, so that employee doesn't have to worry about losing any money that was associated with that missing card. Correct. Okay, that's a great point. Um, and now, what if an employee is afraid of post-net garnishment? Okay, so uh, you can't do anything about pre-net, you know, something that's a garnishment that's coming um, from the government. But I know that when I was in the staffing industry, that was a huge concern of my employee base. Um, a lot of uh, the guys working working with me were concerned that you know uh, an old um, you know car car that was repossessed or some kind of other debt from a from a debt collector would be uh, pulled from their paycheck. And we often found that they had a bank account, but they didn't want to utilize it, especially for direct deposit, because they felt like there would be nothing left uh, by the time they got to the bank to uh, to access the funds. So we find that a lot of employees, when that's a concern of theirs, um, he, when they hear that we, the cards are non-reporting and that they do not have a concern for post-net garnishments, that they're very ex accepting and, and, and really um, welcome of, you know, having in the pay card because for the first time they can keep their funds stored electronically and safely and do all the things that we talked about <clears throat> without having the risk of of losing access to those funds because they're being pulled. Great, good point. Um, do you have any other um, typical questions that you hear or concerns that um, you might come across from anyone thinking about moving over to pay cards? I think that one of the number one is 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 to. Uh, choose a provider where, where customer service for cardholder service is is always free. Uh, that's that's very important um, to choose a, a provider that does not charge any type of, of research fees. Um, you know, speaking to a live rep um, is, is to be able to have a uh, a provider that uh, a cardholder can call 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, uh, speak to a live rep, and and that always be free. Yeah. And customer service for the employer is equally as, as important. And, um, I, you know, I would like to just, you know, speak real quick, if it would be all right, to the way we handle that, and some others do as well. And this is, uh, I think, very important in the staffing industry because you oftentimes have employees and you're having to deal with uh, payroll concerns after hours, on the weekends, and, and as we all know, even on holidays. And when an employee needs their money, in the staffing industry, we have to get it to them because uh, we understand that uh, an upset employee means an upset client and possibly an, uh, an employee walking off a, a project or, or leaving a client's location, and that's, that's not good for business. Um, so one of the things that we do is we actually have an assigned um, enrollment specialist that works with you for the life of the account. So should you have any questions, need any additional training, which is always free, no matter how many times you need it, um, or you have an after-hours need where there's a correction in pay, you realize you paid somebody $100 instead of $1,000, and those funds need to be there ASAP so the employee doesn't leave your, your services and leave your client. Um, you have a, a cell phone number, an email address, and an office line where you can contact your representative who knows your business inside and out and can handle that for you remotely. Um, you know, I want to also point out that uh, you know, we, we certainly appreciate the the opportunity to talk to all of you today. Um, you know, as I mentioned, I came from the staffing industry. That's where I've spent the majority of my career. But as have our founders of the company, um, both Brian Slowick and Chris Rupel, our two founders, 
um, also came from the staffing industry. So we know the pains, and uh, we have uh, we continually try to do what we can to uh, to ease those. Um, and certainly, always enjoy talking to others in the industry. Wonderful. Well, I've gone ahead and put the contact slide up. If anyone has any further questions or would like additional information about pay cards, please feel free to reach out to either Dallas or Alex directly. They would be happy to field any questions that you may have. As we're wrapping up our webinar today, I would like to thank you all for, per for your participation and certainly Dallas and Alex for sharing your knowledge of pay cards. We will have a recording available on our website. It's at tricom.com. You'll find it under the resources and the industry insider webinars tab. Thank you again for your participation and watch for information on our next webinar session, which will be held on April 23rd, presented by staffing industry analysts as they discuss current staffing trends. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody.